Today on The Joy of Editing, it is the TK Magic Mixer, TK9, the Nick Detail Extractor. I'll be doing a black and white conversion with some color toning, plus tips and tricks. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me again today. We're going to have some fun today. I have this really cool image that I want to do a black and white conversion on. Now, I'll be using the TK Magic Mixer to do it. We'll be doing some toning on this image, some color toning. And then I'll be using the detail extractor filter found in Nick Color Effects to do just a little bit of detail extraction. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK Magic Mixer or... TK9 or the Nick Collection. I'll have links for all of that in the description below this video. Those are my affiliate links. And when you use those links, I make a small commission, which in turn helps me to keep videos coming your way. So thank you all for using my links. I appreciate it. Well, let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing I want to do is convert this to black and white, and I'll use the TK Magic Mixer for that. Now, if you look right here, this is my TK Magic Mixer. All I have to do is click the plus, and you'll notice I have a black and white image, but I'm not going to stop here. We can adjust this. By the way, the TK Magic Mixer works with Photoshop's Channel Mixer, a really hard tool to wrap your head around but the Magic Mixer makes it so easy. Now, the Magic Mixer also works with color. If you want to work with color, you see right down here where it says LUM, there's a little checkbox. If you click this, now you can work with color. Now, if I shut off the Magic Mixer layer, you don't see a change, right? But if I start clicking this button, the Randomizer button will go and get random looks in this image. So I'm going to click this, and you notice every time I click it, I get a different look in the image, and that's pretty cool. And this is really nice if you're not sure where you want to take an image, you can click the randomizer or you can adjust these adjustments by themselves. Now you can reset the magic mixer if you click this button. And now if I uncheck loom, I'm back to that black and white conversion. Now the way I like to start is by clicking the randomizer button just to go through some random looks to see what I like. And if I like one, I can stop there. But if I keep going and then I... Well, I really like this one. But see right down here, you have a forward and a rewind or reverse button. I can go back through and look at the different ones I've got. And you know what? The one I like the best was this last one right here. Isn't that cool? I really like this. But I'd like to work on the sky separately. So I can do a double black and white conversion. And I'll show you how to do that. But before I do that, let me shut off this magic mixer and I'm going to add another magic mixer by clicking the plus. And the reason I'm doing that, in case you're wondering what these buttons are, red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, these represent different colored channels in Photoshop. So if I click on red, we could see what a red channel looks like or a green channel. And sometimes you can get some really good looks just by picking a channel like this. There's blue, here is cyan, here's magenta, and here is yellow. Now, I kind of like magenta, and then you could take these sliders here, like cyan red. Anything that's red, if I drag it to the right, anything red will get lighter. Or if I drag it to the left, reds will get darker. And you'll notice these other sliders move along with it. Because you see this number right here in total, 100%. This is what's hard about using the channel mixer. If you start adjusting these sliders, it's easy to get a different number than 100%. And you'll get a little warning message saying, you know, Photoshop would like you to stay around 100%. But the Magic Mixer makes it so you always have 100% here. That's one of the cool things about it. And then... If there's any magenta or green, if I drag this slider towards green, anything that's green will get lighter. Or anything that's yellow, if I drag this yellow-blue slider to the left, anything yellow will get lighter. Or if I move it to the right, anything blue will get lighter. But consequently, if I take this blue slider and move it to the left, blue gets darker and yellow gets lighter. But that's the way that works. I just wanted to point that out to you. And then you can adjust your brightness with this slider here. And you can adjust the contrast here. But I just wanted to point that out, just in case you're wondering. I'm going to go ahead and delete this channel by clicking this button on my combo panel. And now I'll turn on this magic mixer layer by clicking right here. And now we can see the conversion again. Now let me show you how I can do 
a separate conversion for the sky. I'll use my combo panel and click this button to select the sky. And you can see the marching ants and you can see my selection indicator here on my multi mass panel. And now what I'll do is click my layer mass calculator, click active selection and click the minus to subtract out the sky. And now you can see the sky has color. And now I still have that selection. You can see by the selection indicator, I'll click this button right here in the combo panel and that deselects the selection. And now all I need to do is click the plus in the TK Magic Mixer and now the sky is black and white. And now when I adjust these adjustments, it will only affect the sky. Now I'm just gonna use the sliders this time. I want some of the blue color in the sky to get darker. Anything that was blue will get darker if I take this yellow blue slider and drag it to the left. You see that, isn't that cool? And maybe somewhere right around there looks pretty good. And notice whenever I move this, we always maintain 100% here, which is really nice. So watch these other sliders as I drag this yellow blue slider to the right. You see how they move as well. But I'm going to again move it right about here. And I think that's going to be good. Now I can tweak any of these other sliders I want, but I think I'm happy with this. Now here's another cool thing you can do. Say for instance, you have a certain setting you like for skies. You could come and click this button and you could go ahead and click plus and let's say sky, let's say skies and click OK. That saves that out as a skies preset. So I can use that anytime I want. So all you need to do is click on your presets. You can save a preset, remove a preset or click on a preset to apply it. So if I clicked on skies, that would be my sky setting and I'll click the X here and now I'm back to the Magic Mixer. So you can save out presets, which is really nice. I love using the Magic Mixer for doing black and white conversions. And as I said, it works with color also. And the great thing is it's only $10. It's super affordable. And now here comes a tip. If you're worried about blowing out any highlights or shadows, we have something in the TK9 plugin for Photoshop and that's this button right here, Live Clipping. If I click this, you can see anything in red is clipped highlights. Anything in blue is clipped shadows. I don't mind clipping a little bit of shadows. That's fine down here, but I don't want to clip the highlights. So here's what I can do. I'm going to click on the color grading tool found in the multi mass panel. Now it goes to the top of the layer. I'm going to click and drag it down under the live clipping layer. And what I'm going to do is click on the highlight button and I'm just going to drag this brightness slider to the left till the highlights stop being clipped. See right there, I know I'm not clipping my highlights. And then I could go and click on the shadow button and move it a little bit to the right and get rid of any shadow clipping. So that's a really handy tool. And then to close live clipping, just click this button again. A great tool. And that's something I highly recommend that you use when you're working with the Magic Mixer or with any Photoshop tool because it's easy to get clipping in an image and the live clipping will really help you out. The next thing I want to do is bring out some detail in this dog. And to do that, I'll use the Nick Collection Detail Extractor found in Nick Color Effects. I'm going to come up here to File in Photoshop, come down to Automate, and click on my Nick Collection 7 palette. And it goes down here. Because I closed it the last time I used it, I'll click this button right here and click Nick Color Effects. That'll launch Nick Color Effects, and we'll use the Detail Extractor. And here we are in color effects. So I'm going to find detail extractor, which is right here. I'll click the plus. Let me shut detail extractor off by unchecking right here. Here's before and here's after. Now I'm only interested in the dog. Now, if you want to increase the effect, you can adjust this slider to the right. And I like it just where it is, but you can add a little bit of contrast in if you need it. Saturation in this case won't mean anything. And you can adjust the radius here. This is normal. This is fine. And this is large. In this case, let me see. I like normal. I think I'll just leave it on normal. Now, at this point, we can click apply and send this back into Photoshop. But I always like to check on convert to smart object just in case I want to come back and readjust this. I'll click apply and that'll send us back into Photoshop. Now, my Nick collection palette is in my way. So I'll click the minus and it'll go down here and live. And now I have the detail extraction applied to the entire image, but I only want it on the dog. So let me show you what I can do. Now I can use the object selection tool in Photoshop or 
I can use the new TK selection brush, which is absolutely free. And I have links for that in the description below as well. It's really cool. I'll show you how it works. I'm going to click this button right here. And what that does is it lets me use a lasso object selection. See the pink outline around it showing it's selected. The plus is selected. So what I'm going to do is just draw around the dog and this uh, pillar or whatever he's sitting on like this and see if I can select this. And then all I have to do is click this button again. And now you can see it's made the selection. Now this is Photoshop's object selection tool that it's actually working with here. And you can see it's missed some areas here. So what I can do is click this button right here and see my selection. And the plus is selected for me. So I could come here and just paint like this. No big deal, right? Just paint the area it missed like this. And then I click this button again. But you know what? I don't think this is the dog's ear right here. So what I'll do is I'll click this button again. This time I'll click minus and I'll just paint that off just like so. And click this button again and there is my selection. Now what do I do with this selection? I'll click on my layer mask calculator on my TK9 combo panel. Click on active selection and then click this button to apply it. And now it's only on the dog. Now I still have a selection here. You can see by the marching ants. I'll click this button to deselect that selection. And now just look at the dog. I'm going to shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. And now you can see our attention is drawn more to the dog. And there's really nice detail that the detail extractor has brought out. Now let's say we want to add a nice sepia tone to this image. And let me show you how we can do it. What we can do is click on any one of these magic mixer layers to make them active and click this button right here for toning. So I'm going to click it. And now you'll notice at the top of the layer stack, I have this hue saturation in the colorize mode here. And there's a lot of sepia on here, but now for a nice little tip. If you have the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, if not, you can use uh, Blend If. I'm not going to go into Blend If because I just want to show you how easy it is to work with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. And by the way, if you think the saturation is too oversaturated, you could drag the saturation slider to the left or you could change the hue. You don't have to use sepia. The Magic Mixer does default at the sepia tone, but you could get any tone in here when you adjust the hue slider. And now for the toning tip. And a special shout out goes to Tony Kuiper who told me about this tip. And I really enjoy it. What you want to do is right now my color grading tool is in the way of my multi mask panel. So I'll click the X. Nothing changes on the color grading layers. And click this edit blend if button. If you think edit blend if is hard to work with in Photoshop, you really need the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. It makes it so easy. I only want the toning on dark tones, so I'll click the dark swan button. And look how that sepia gets tamed down. It's out of my highlights. It's only in the darker tones. Let me shut this off. Here is before and here is after. And then we could take this top handle if I want to make it less obvious i can take this handle and drag it to the left you see that and just grab the tones that i want like right there that looks really natural let me shut this off here's before and here is after and you can always increase the saturation if you want it a little bit stronger in there you see that but i like it right about here Again, here's the before and here's the after. If we take a look up here on the multi mass panel, see the area in magenta. These are the tonal ranges that are getting the toning. And you'll notice these are your shadows and we move into midtones and then these are highlights. So it's not even going into our highlights at all. And now just to finish the image off, I think I'll add a vignette. And for that, I'll go into my TK actions. If you have the TK9 plugin for Photoshop and your actions aren't open, just click your TK button on either the combo or CX panel and then click vignette. A Gaussian blur dialog comes up and just click OK. And just like that, you have a vignette. Let me shut this uh, layer off. Here's before vignette and here is after vignette. And that is it. And now let me click this button on my combo panel. This is a overall before and after. So here's before. We started out with this really cool color image and we end up with this really great black and white image with some nice toning on it. 
Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.